Hello, my name is Laura Hackle, and I will be covering erection view member labels and bill of material enhancements in this webinar today. Please hold your questions till the end regarding topics that are covered during this webinar. The first thing I'm going to cover are what are erection view member labels. If I go into my model, erection view member labels are going to be how they show up in the model and in your drawing editor. So we have our section size here and our piece mark. If I want to determine how they get set up, I can go to my options, fabricator options, member label configuration. So now it will be how they show up in the model and also how they show up in the erection view for the drawing editor. And it will also be your display options will affect this. So if I have my left and right end elevations not turned on in the model right now, even though I set them up in my member label configuration, they still will not show up. So to do that, I'll go to my options, fabricator options, member label configuration, the property name first, I'll do section size, the perspective, we have lengthwise or cross section, lengthwise will be along the member line or cross section will be like C30. C31. I want lengthwise. My horizontal, I'll keep that center. And my vertical, let's move that to below and we'll come back to priority. The second property name, I'll do piece mark. Lengthwise, let's do left center Oops. and above. We'll do left end elevation, left center and below. Right down elevation, lengthwise, right center, and below. Once I hit OK here, it will automatically update my model. So I'll click OK. So we have below, and we have above, left center, and center. Notice that my member end elevations did not show up, so I need to go into my display options. Turn those on. Click OK. And now those automatically show up. Now, like I said, I'd come back to the priority. Let's say I wanted my left end elevation to be above. Well, the pri how a priority works is the first priority is going to be closest to the member line, and then they'll start stacking outwards. So if I go to my member label configuration again through options, fabricator options, let's say my left end elevation instead of above, below, I want it above, and I'm going to change that to a priority of 2. Click OK, and it automatically updates. Another thing that you can add to the member label configurations now are custom properties. First custom property that we're going to set up um, will be the shear stud count. So I went ahead and already set this up. I am going to check on to add to a member label configuration so that will show up so I can drop it down in that list. So I'll go to my options, job options. Custom Properties, Member, I'm going to scroll down my Shear Stud Count and click Edit. Now the entry name is how it's going to show up in your Member Label Configuration. I will want to check this on to Add to Member Label Configuration. Click OK. Now if I want to go ahead and add one, I can double click B79, so I go to my properties, I put this in my detailer tab, and I already put 12 here. Let's say I want to change that to 10. Click OK, and OK. Now you notice that nothing shows up, so I need to add it to a member label configuration. So I go to my options, fabricator options, member label configuration, drop that down. I see shear studs now. Go lengthwise. Let's go right center and above. Now I notice they still don't show up. So another thing to check is if they don't show up, you need to make sure you add them to the member label label configuration and also you need to make sure that your custom properties are checked on in your display options. 
So if I go to my display options, check on custom properties and click OK, now I see that 10 shows up. You can also add it for this W16 by 26. Maybe I want to add four shear studs here, four here, and eight here. So if I double click on it again, I can go into my properties, detailer tab. I'll put in my brackets. So let's say four comma four comma eight. End the brackets. Click OK and OK. And now they automatically show up like that. Another thing that Bruce Vaughn kindly provided was a shear stud parametric. So he put this on the forum post. It's called 2015 Shear Stud Counts on Erection Drawings. I have the parametric on my desktop, so I'm going to go ahead and run that. I'll go to Parametric Run, go to my desktop, find my shear stud counts, click Open. I'm going to go ahead and set the, my shear stud counts, and let's say I just go ahead and select all of these B79s. Right click OK. Right now it said 10, maybe I want to change that back to 12. Click OK. And now 12 shows up on all of these. I'll right click OK and I'm out of that command, or the parametric. So you can use Bruce's uh, parametric or you can manually edit it by going to the properties and the detailers where I put it for my shear stud count. Another custom property I'm going to add, or I have already added that I'm going to show, will be for my left end elevation. So for my left end elevation, I, I already created it. I do need to add it to my member label configuration and I put it in my approval tab and that's where I'm going to fill that information out. So if I go to my options, job options, custom property, member, scroll down, my left end shear load, click edit. I will want to turn this on so it shows up in my member label configuration. Click OK. I'll exit. Now coming up, let's say on this B40, I want to put 50 kips on the left end elevation, or left end shear load. So if I go to my properties, and the approval for my left end shear load, this is where I put it. I'm going to just type in 50 kips, and click OK, and then OK again. Now notice it hasn't shown up yet because I need to add it to my member label configuration. So if I go to my options, Fabricator options, member label configuration, my shear studs, I want left end shear load is what I called it, lengthwise, say I want it left and below. And now you can see there's 50 kips. So now I'm going to show, once I detail this erection view, how it shows up in the drawing editor. So I'll go to detail erection view. I'll just leave this at stick. Annotate my erection views. Click OK. Select my roof framing plan. So that went through. Now what's new here? is now that they're in the eView cleanup, our custom properties will show up. So let's say our left end shear load in our shear studs. So you can turn them on and off in our drawing editor. So I'm going to go to that drawing editor, go to the erection view, roof framing plan. Now you share shear stud counts. You see our 50 kips. So to edit this, I'm going to drop this down to members, and I'm going to highlight all of them, right click, edit, 
Let me scroll down here, and now you'll see your left end shear load in your shear studs. You'll also see this auto position button. An example of that is, let's say I wanted my right end elevation to actually be um, a priority of two and above my shear stud count. So I can go to my options, fabricator options, member label configuration, my right end elevation, I can change this to above, put a priority of two, and click OK. Now you don't see anything right now, but if I were to open this, reopen my roof framing, I guess in that instance it didn't change, but it did put it above. So I didn't have to read detail my erection view, it automatically updates if I have that auto position turned on. Another thing about custom properties is let's say I wanted to change all those 12s to let's say I actually needed only 11. If I go into my model, all these are 12, say I just select them, right click, edit, go to my properties, detailer, let's say I change this to 11, click OK, and OK. Now if I go back, I need to reopen that view, and it automatically updates, so I do not need to re-detail that erection view. You can also double click on that specific member and if I scroll down to the bottom now only that specific custom property is shown so I can turn that off if I don't want to see it. So you can individually edit it or edit them all at once. I'm going to turn this back to default and I'll save this. Moving along to our second part of the webinar for the Bill of Material Enhancements. So if I click open, let's say I go to a new sheet outline. I'll call this D24 by 36. Um, I'll just add in a border here. Okay, and then to add a bill of material, I'll go to Objects, Bill of Material, Place Bill. You notice that there is not a place one, two, or three. You can add as many bill of materials as you'd like on, on a sheet or a sheet outline. So I'll go to Place Bill. It also does not ask you if you how many lines you'd like. So I'll click up here in the top right corner. I want to verify, so I'll left click for yes. And now you notice I could place multiple bills of materials on the sheet outline. If I hover over them, you'll see that it indicates which bill of material this is. So one, two, and three. Also, if I select this bill of material for three and click delete, everything deletes. It's all one entity now. So the physical and the digital bill are all combined as one entity. I'm just going to have one bill of material on this sheet outline. I'll save this. The next is I'm going to show the bill of material layout. Um, and also, if this is checked on, which it is not right now, you'll see the left end shear load and the shear stud counts can now be added to, or your custom properties can now be added to the bill of material. 
So it's also customizable per sheet, which I'll get to in a second. So if I go to my options, fabricator options, build material layout, a couple new ones is we have unit surface area and total surface area. By default, they are turned off, but you can make them active. Like I showed in the example there, you can add custom properties to your bill of material now. So if I go to my options, job options, custom properties, and member, go down to my shear stud count. You need to make sure you check on add to bill of material. And I'll do that for my left end shear load as well. Click OK. And exit. So now when I go to my options, fabricator options, build material layout, they show up at the bottom here. I'm not going to turn these on right now, but I will get to them in a second. So if I click OK, this is how I want my default build material or most of my build materials to look like. So I'll save that. And let's create a detail sheet. Oops. All right, to make sure I have some, I'm going to add or detail a few members. Let's detail all my beams. For those are detailing, let's say I wanted to edit this bill of material. So let's say I wanted to show on this one, I'm going to add that B79 on there, and it has a shear stud count. So I wanted my bill of material to show the shear stud count. So I can now double click on that bill of material. This does not affect any of the other drawings, just this specific sheet. I can turn on my shear stud count. Let's say I want this to be inactive. I don't need my advanced bill number, but I'll turn this to 8 for my shear stud counts and click OK. So now you see it automatically updates. And again, it only affects this sheet. So I'm going to go ahead and add B79 on there. Click OK. Click OK. And now you'll see that my shear stud count, it automatically updated and showed that there is 11 there. So if I double click on that bill of material again, you can change the header justification, you can take, change the column justification. If I go into my appearance tab, there's a show grid, and like I said, this is just per sheet, it's only, only going to update this specific sheet. I can click on show grid or unshow it, double click on it again, show grid, I could put a rotation of 90, maybe I wanted to move that to the bottom right corner, I can drag and drop, I can also right click once it's edited, move stretch, and now any of the points can highlight so I can select my first point, my second point, and drag it down there. I can change the outside pen color. Let's say I wanted that to be magenta, this to be cyan. Click OK. I'm going to change that back to zero. And then I'm going to move it. Your maximum spacing between the lines. Um, we'll get to that in a second once I start adding more on.
my minimum number of rows for this. Let's say I wanted this to be a minimum of 5, and I'm going to leave my maximum number of rows at 65. So if I click OK, you notice there's only one, he one detail on this sheet, so it's only going to be um, filled out for that specific detail. Once I start adding on more, the bill of material starts to expand. I'm going to start adding some here so it Okay, so I started adding them on, and it says this drawing will exceed the plotted bill lines of the sheet. So if I click OK and still place it on here, you see it overruns it. I could add another bill of material on there, so I could do bill of material, place bill. Now you don't have to be on a sheet outline to add another bill of material. So I'll add that. I'll, yes, I'll verify. And now you see that it did the minimum number of lines. Sorry, the maximum, sorry. Of five. And then it spaced them out and then put them on the bill of material too. Let's say I don't want a second bill of material and I just want to expand it on my first bill of material. I can delete that bill of material and go to my appearance. Let's say I increase that maximum number to 75. And then once I start deleting these again, the bill material minimizes. The character height, let's say I change the character height to 8. Now it used to just expand the text, but now it will also expand the bill material with it. So if I turn that to 8, the bill of material gets bigger and not just the text. It will grow with it. I can change this to, let's say, design data's bill of material. Click OK. There is also a setup option for this for the majority of your bill of materials in your fabricator options, drawing cosmetics, and there's a bill of material here. So this could be for the majority of your model or of the sheets. And then if you need to come in here and customize it, you can just double click on it and it edit, updates that for that specific sheet. You can also add bill of materials onto a detail. So I'll save this. Open, let's say I go to my detail. I'll go to B40. So I already had one on there. Let's say I want to add a bill of material, place bill. So let's say I didn't want all this information on there. Let's say I wanted my surface area and I wanted my left end shear load. So I can double click on it. I can make all these inactive. I want my unit surface area, so that is one, and my total, or sorry, my left end shear load, I'll set to two. Click OK. Now I want to change my minimum number of rows to five. And I see that it's still a little off, so I double click on it, go to my appearance, maybe I want my title width ratio to 0.3. 
And maybe I want to make this a little bit bigger. So let's make this character height to 7. So I'll save this. I'll go back to my detail sheet. I can add that. Oops. I'll add B40 on there. Now you see my bill of material is filled out for the unit surface area and my left end shear load. And then the regular stuff is filled out on the right side in the bill of material. That is the end of the member label configurations and the bill of material enhancements webinar. If you have any questions, please go ahead and ask them.